So in addition to the map that John Snow drew showing the deaths of cholera around Broad Street, he had one other piece of evidence that he used to conclude that cholera is being spread through contaminated water. He had a really nice natural experiment. So in London at the time, many households were provided water by two companies, either the Southwark and Vauxhall Company or the Lambeth Company. Now, in 1852, one year before the epidemic started, the Lambeth Company moved its water intake pipe upstream on the Thames River, okay, before the city. So at the time, people were just dumping sewage into the city, because you, into the water, because we didn't know any better, you know? And that was the same place that we were getting the water to drink from. So Southwark and Vauxhall, their intake pipe was in the middle of the city. So it was bring, taking in sewage, nasty, infested water. Whereas the Lambeth Company, because they moved their pipe, they were getting clean water that wasn't ridden and filled with sewage. So the households in the city were split into two groups. Those who got clean water because their house water was provided by Lambeth, and those who got dirty water because their water was provided by Southwark and Vauxhall. Okay, so there are about 40,000 houses in the Southwark and Vauxhall group and about 26,000 in the Lambeth clean water group. So if you believe that houses were basically randomly assigned to which company they got water from, then this is an as-if natural experiment where all we have to do is compare the average rate of deaths in these, due to cholera in these two groups to learn about the causal effect of having dirty, consuming dirty water on whether you'll die from cholera. So I'll talk about how we justify the as-if randomization assumption in a few minutes, but now let's just look at the data and see what we get. So here we've got the number of people who died from cholera in each of the groups. So in Southwark and Vauxhall, this is the people who are drinking sewage water. About 1,263 1, people died. For Lambeth, these are the people who are drinking clean water, 98 people died. So if we look at the rates, okay, because you can't directly compare these numbers because there's different total number of people for these different companies. So you look, if you compare the rate in Southwark and Vauxhall, there are 315 deaths per 10,000 people, whereas for Lambeth, it was 37 deaths per 10,000 people, okay? So this is a huge increase. 315 over 37, which you could also see in this. Many, 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 many more people died who were drinking the sewage water than the ones who were drinking the clean water. Okay? And if you look at through the rest of London, um, which was provided by water from other companies, um, other people died there, but the rate wasn't nearly as bad as the people who were getting water from Southwark and Vauxhall. Um, and for Lambeth, you know, they were much better on average than the rest of London. So that's just the raw data. If you want to just know the average treatment effect, it's the difference between these two things. Huge, very huge. And by the way, I'll point out there's no standard errors, no confidence intervals, no p-values or anything in this table. Well, none of that stuff existed at the time. This is from 1855. P-values, confidence intervals, they wouldn't be invented for another 50, 60, 70 years. Okay? So the whole idea of doing statistical inference was completely foreign to this. These, to John Snow at the time. But it really didn't matter. The sample sizes are very large here, 40,000, 26,000. Even if you did that, these, this effect would be statistically significant. Okay? So what we see is it looks like if you just do this comparison, dr drinking dirty water is going to give you cholera during this epidemic. Okay, so all we have to do is figure out is the as if randomization assumption true? Okay, do we really believe that? If so, then this conclusion that it's the water that's spreading cholera is valid. Okay, so how did John Snow justify this? Well, I'm going to read you a quote um, because it's really amazing what he said. He said, quote, The mixing of the water supply is of the most intimate kind. The pipes of each company go down all the streets and into nearly all the courts and alleys. A few houses are supplied by one company and a few by the other. According to the decision of the owner or occupier at the time when the water companies were in active competition. In many cases, a single house has a supply different from that on either side. Okay, so houses on the other side of the streets have are supplied by different uh, companies, even though they're on the same street. 
Quote, each company supplies both rich and poor, both large houses and small, and there is no difference in either in the condition or occupation of the persons receiving the water of the different companies. It is obvious that no experiment could have been devised which would more thoroughly test the effect of water supply on the progress of cholera than this. That's John Snow speaking in 1855 after doing this analysis. So what did he do? Well, he just did a balance check. He said, we observed some variables about people living in these groups, whether they're rich or poor, um, whether they're living in a big house or a small house. OK, so are these variables the same across the two groups or not? He says, yes. Basically, the percentage of rich people in Southwark and Vauxhall is the same as in Lambeth. The percentage of poor is the same in each group. The percentage of large houses is, is the same in each group. Um, and the size of the house, the condition of the house, these are, there's no difference. So he's checked that we have balance on observables, which is exactly what you would see if you had true randomization. Okay. Now, even though we've done that balance check and it, it looks good, we're still not guaranteed that we have balance on unobservables. Okay. For example, suppose there's a health, really healthy people uh, only chose the Lambeth Company because they thought the Lambeth Company was just healthier overall for some reason. Okay. So they chose the Lambeth Company. Um, then when cholera hits, maybe it's not the water that's causing it. It's just the fact that healthier people are more robust and they're not going to get wiped out by cholera. That would be a confounder, and that would be a problem here. Well, Snow also argues that this is not the case. And the reason is, he says, more than 300,000 people of all ages and social classes were, now I'm quoting him, divided into two groups without their choice, and in most cases, without their knowledge, one group being supplied with water contaminating, uh, containing the sewage of London, and amongst it whatever might have come from the cholera patients, the other group having quite free, um, having water quite free from such impurities. So he basically argues that people didn't even know that Lambeth moved their pipe. They weren't even making the decisions because their landlords were doing it. So how could they possibly have uh, selected into picking Lambeth because it was healthier? It's just not plausible. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the air conditions of people living in these two things were the same. Okay, So that's constant across the two groups the air conditions, because people all lived in the same area in London. So that's held constant. And that's important because that was the prevailing theory at the time, that people thought it was miasmas in the air causing this. So the only way that we could see a difference like this due to miasmas would be if the level, the number of miasmas were different, were much higher in these people than in these. But that's not true because they were living across the street from each other. So that cannot so the air cannot explain this data. It has to be something else. And because we think that it's not that it's rich people living in Lambeth and poor people living in Salford, that's not the case. The main difference is the quality of the water, that these people were drinking sewage water and these people weren't. And that's what John Snow concluded in 1855.